Okay, and here we come out of the ONC building, uh, getting ready to head to the launch pad. We did something a little differently. We stopped in front of the Astro van to take a quick shot. Here we are at the launch pad, and uh, if, uh, we are getting strapped in here, and uh, here you can see Pambo uh, getting ready to, uh, to get hooked up with COM, and, uh, and then uh, Zambo take it away. Yeah, I don't, don't know if we can bring the audio up. We, we do have some of the, uh, the sounds associated. Okay, so that was about 150,000 feet Mach 5, the solid rocket booster separated. We continued on on our three main Within engines. Everything worked great on asset. It was wonderful. And then separated uh, from the tank after achieving our main engine cutoff. And uh, that was a look at, last look at ET-120. It performed uh, wonderfully for us. And uh, we opened up the payload bay doors and got to work. And the first thing we had to do on flight day two, uh, was our inspection of our uh, leading edges. This is a quick video of how that proceeds. Uh, it takes up about a half a day. It's a lot of monitoring tasks, and uh, we just want to make sure we have a good, healthy vehicle. There was some discussion about the leading edges prior to launch, and we got a clean bill of health off of those. And then it was also kind of fun. We saw at one point that uh, we could see ourselves in the window and, of course, had to, had to wave. <clears throat> so we gave ourselves an inspection. Flight day three is a very, very busy day. We're off to the races very early. Performing a TI burn here. This is the shuttle as seen from the station, about 48,000 feet away. Uh, we use uh, computers on board as well as laptops and the human eye. This is an optical alignment site that uh, Pam used to uh, perform the final phases of the rendezvous and docking. You can see we're uh, pretty close to lined up there at this point in the trajectory. About 600 feet below the station, we do a a uh, pitch-up maneuver, a full 360-degree maneuver to basically present the belly of the orbiter to the space station crew. They have uh, telephoto lenses and they can snap photographs of our TPS to make sure that no critical dings have uh, been sustained and uh, here we are uh, getting closer to station. So uh, this is a pretty exciting view out the window is to see the space station getting closer. It's a, a huge vehicle. Um, and it's uh, pretty awe-inspiring to uh, kind of line yourself up, uh, but you can you can see that I'm actually not looking out the window. I'm uh, following the guidance of the cameras, and I'll bring you on board here for docking. Capture light. Discovery and Alpha capture confirmed. And ISS is in free drift. Houston copies. Discovery arriving. <laughs> but this is really the moment that's most exciting of all, is uh, the uh, ability to see your friends and the big hugs and the laughing that goes on when we get to see our friends, uh, particularly Clay, who we hadn't seen in many months. Unfortunately, we don't have a lot of time for that. we got to get ready for the spacewalks. And uh, we, we, we get up there and we start really fast. It's a very fast pace, uh, barely attached to the station. There you go out uh, uh, in the airlock for a spacewalk while the guys outside start uh, working with the arm. And it's, so it's a very uh, concentrated activity. A lot of people have to do uh, their stuff uh, according to a certain precise timeline. Here is Scott uh, coming out for his first uh, spacewalk, and here is Wheels attached to the arm uh, uh, carrying around a piece of equipment. Uh, spacewalk was about uh, six hours. Uh, inside, they were working with, uh, with the arm. Their task was to 
essentially remove the node from the cargo bay of the shuttle and uh, put it up on the uh, temporary st station on the on the node one. This is of course the f fast uh, forward. We don't go that fast with uh, with the hardware. <laughs> and um, so the while all of this happen is happening, uh, uh, of course the spacewalk is still uh, uh, ongoing and. Uh, uh, in fact, at this point, they were concentrating on the P6, uh, removing uh, all the connection there, hydraulic connection, ammonia connection. They actually got sprayed, Scott got sprayed a little bit with ammonia, so we had to do a decontamination on the end of the spacewalk. And, uh, but it was, it was pretty fast. I mean, a few minutes uh, later, after, as soon as you, you attach the, I mean, a few hours later, as soon as you attach the node, uh, there you go, we go inside, open it up, and uh, we have a mask and uh, uh, goggles. Uh, looks like we are robbing a bank, by the way. But uh, it lasts only a couple of hours uh, clean up the node, and uh, here we are working uh, already on it. E EVA2, uh, Scott and Dan uh, uh, came out the door, and uh, Paolo, there's Paolo quarterbacking uh, from, the mid, uh, from the flight deck of the, of the shuttle. And the main, main uh, mission of EVA2 was to outfit the outside of the node, the things that we couldn't carry uh, on launch because uh, it wouldn't fit. So, so uh, they outfitted it with some handrails and some other uh, uh, pieces of equipment. And also, uh, they worked along the P6-Z1 interface um, as we disconnected uh, the P6 from the top of the station, getting ready to move it on the follow-on EVA to the end of the port uh, wing of the, of, the, of the station. And so there's uh, Steph and I at the robotics workstation while Scott, and again, this is sped up a little bit. We didn't, we weren't uh, this fast with the uh, moving the P6. Um, it's about 37,000 pounds, I think. And there, here you can see uh, from uh, Dan's helmet cam, looking inside the Sarge, this is where he found the, uh, uh, the FOD along the race ring there. And um, that kind of spooled us up for a, uh, what we thought was going to be the first uh, contingency um, EVA to try to uh, take a look at that. Here's uh, Scott and Dan uh, attaching a grapple fixture on the outside of the, uh, of the uh, node. So we'd gotten P6 detached at that point, and uh, it was time to attach it and put it in its final location at the uh, far port end of the truss. But there are no cameras out there. So the robotics operators got P6 all lined up, and then we sent uh, Scott and Wheels out there to essentially give uh, a visual uh, guidance to the operators, the robotics operators, to line the two up perfectly uh, so that P6 would uh, get attached to the station. And so once everything had been lined up using the robotic arm, uh, the spacewalkers used uh, their tools in order to actually fix the two of them together. So very uh, thrilling moment actually to get P6 anchored at the end. You can see how far out they are. That's the shuttle way out there. It's tremendously uh, far distance out at the end of that truss. Uh, we also delivered um, a new MBSU, uh, main bus switching unit. And uh, at just as the EVA was wrapping up, we started to deploy the solar arrays. Now, we had a very high sun angle, uh, and that gave us a little bit of difficulties, but we got the first uh, solar array deployed without any difficulties. But uh, P6 has uh, one little bit of a cranky solar array that's given us trouble before, and uh, you can see how bad the lighting was. Uh, at one point, it came out of some glare, and this is what we saw. We were all just completely horrified to see it. Um, as I think I described it as a fur ball. So that kicked off some very intense activity for several days as we prepared to fix the solar array. And we had to actually construct the cufflinks, is what we called them. Uh, they're just basically load-bearing devices that you'll see Scott install onto the solar array. And it took a tremendous amount of effort for the ground and uh, the crew to prepare for this spacewalk. And uh, finally, it was time to go out the door. Yeah, the morning of uh, EVA 4, uh, music from Star Wars was sent up, so it really got us fired up for a very big day in space. Uh, uh, my wrists are being uh, covered here by three layers of uh, Kapton tape for a little extra insulation and protection. One for my daughter Jenna, one for Luke, and one for my wife uh, uh, Gail, so that, that made me feel better. Uh, we got on the end of this enormous boom. It was the space station robotic arm plus the OBSS, so about a 90 uh, foot uh, boom that uh, I'm perched on the end of here, and I just was treated to a God's eye view. This is much prettier in color, by the way. Take my word on it. Uh, but I, I could see the entire space station and, and just a, a phenomenal uh, view on the on the way out. About 45 minutes out to the work site, uh, like uh, threading a needle, a very, very difficult uh, robotics to get me out there. 
Uh, and at the very end of the trajectory, lo and behold, I was able to see the, the damage, uh, which we hadn't been able to really visualize all that clearly from the, uh, the cockpit. And it turned out to be a snag in a guide wire in one of the hinge wires that had ripped apart two of the, uh, the hinges. And so I had to cut the, uh, the offending snag out and then install these cufflinks. The first one went in very nicely here, as you'll see. But uh, as things progressed, I really wanted to have my buddy Wheels out, out there on the end of the arm with me because I needed to have an extra set of hands. Um, you'll see in the next sequence here, you know, there's, there's some waving motion of the, uh, the array. I needed to push, pull, and install the, uh, the cufflink all at the same time. So I ended up using three tools at once here. And uh, it worked out really nicely. That uh, extra tool there we called the hockey stick. And that was my, my second best friend out there at, at the, uh, the work site. Wills is my best buddy. But, uh, uh, and uh, we ended, ended up putting in uh, five uh, cufflinks across the br uh, breadth of the, uh, the solar array here. And you can actually see the, uh, the full repair at this point. We uh, stayed out for another half hour or so and monitored the, uh, the full deployment of the array. And uh, pleased to report that it's producing 100% power, taking loads on the space station. And I think it's really a, a triumph of the entire NASA team to be able to pull something like this off in just 72 hours of homework on the ground. A lot of sleepless nights for many, many people. Uh, at the end of the walk, uh, we kind of uh, cruised on back to the, the airlock. And it was really beautiful. I could just pull off with my fingertips and then coast for 20 or 30 feet. Uh, just a really a beautiful sensation. We were outside for seven hours and 19 minutes this day. And uh, so at the end of VA4, uh, we had uh, accomplished a lot, uh, but still we had a few things to do. We had uh, visitors coming up with Telecom. This is the president of Italy. Then we had uh, uh, President Bush Good coming up. Back to work now. Back to work, all you guys. So we did a few of these teleconferences. Uh, we. Uh, did a, uh, this George and I going around uh, checking out a little bit the station while everybody else is working, of course. Uh, uh, we, are, we are trying to not to bump uh, the people working on the arm, you know, when you, when you pass by there and uh, Pam is moving some water around and uh, being happy on seeing us around. And uh, uh, Peggy and uh, uh, Clay uh, fitting uh, or reconfiguring the um, node. And here, a little bit of experiment that was put up by the Italian Space Agency. I'm launching a ball that doesn't exist there, so it was kind of funny. And then uh, we managed to also to talk to some of the schools uh, down uh, on the ground and carry out some experiment. This is an experiment that was put up by some high schools in, uh, in Italy. So pretty, pretty interesting there. As we uh, were flying overhead, uh, everything occurred uh, with the Earth rotating underneath us as a beautiful backdrop. And uh, we would occasionally see some marvelous sights uh, when we had time to look. Uh, this was actually pretty, pretty awesome and terrifying. These were the uh, fires that were occurring in Southern California about our launch time. So that's Southern California. And the fact that you could see them so starkly from space was pretty, pretty amazing. Those are the Alps. And that is Italy stretching out to your left, out to the south. And the mountains reach uh, right up. And uh, it's almost as if you could touch them uh, up there. And then these are the Himalayas. Pretty uh, amazing views. Uh, it was then time for us to think about coming home. We had uh, some farewell ceremonies uh, that we had to uh, accomplish. We put our mission sticker up there, and then we had our farewell ceremony on the uh, on the station. We had two folks that we were, uh, I guess, considering most. One was Dan uh, Tani, who we were going to leave up there. He was looking at a, a long mission out in front of him, and we were bringing back Clay Anderson, who had been up there for a long time. And so these were uh, two two men looking at a, uh, at a very long time, uh, opposite ends of a mission. It was a pretty emotional, pretty wet, gooey time. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, so lots of hugs, and then we sealed the deal with a final fist bump before we went out and closed the hatch. Then came uh, undock and, and separation. Uh, the undock happened about 10 seconds early, and uh, there's our separation, the springs from the uh, the docking apparatus give us our initial push out away from the station, and we end up separating at a very stately rate of about one foot every 10 seconds. And Peggy uh, rang us out, as is now the tradition. That's my one input at 30 feet to double the rate to two feet every 10 seconds. 
<laughs> so a pretty spectacular view of the station as we were going out. And, and a curious lighting effect, because there's no atmosphere or anything to dim the light, the station is very starkly lit. Again, we're missing a little bit of this because it's in uh, black and white. But the station is very, uh, very bright, very radiant, and then the earth tones beneath it are somewhat muted. So it almost looks like it's, it's fake, like it's uh, uh, two fit pieces of uh, film put together. But it is a beautiful thing. And then uh, we uh, bade farewell to the station as the, as the sun set on it, and we did our final separation burn. Well, all good things must come to an end. And uh, the uh, first thing that we usually do uh, that tells us we're coming home is we close up the payload bay doors, uh, which of course serve the important purpose of radiating our heat to space. We have to hop into our launch and entry suits, which I assure you is much easier in microgravity than it is on the ground. And uh, then it's time to get ready for the deorbit burn. And you can see us all uh, briefing and preparing here. And as the engines ignite, you can actually see some a big jolt there. Um, and it feels pretty heavy. I mean, it's not that much, but uh, uh, it feels like a lot of weight after being in microgravity for so long. And here, of course, you can see uh, the uh, spectacular fireworks of entry. and. Uh, as we come down and we came over the uh, continental United States and it was just unbelievable. It was like doing a supersonic low level. We just felt like the world was on fast forward zooming past us. Uh, spectacular view. And then of course it was a beautiful clear dry day here in Florida. And uh, you can see a little bit in the heads up display there, the coast of uh, you know, Cocoa Beach there uh, beneath us as we came in. Um, just a, a really, really pretty day, I think, to, uh, to see uh, the shuttle from a long way away. There was one little tiny cloud deck right over the runway. <laughs> but we, we did break out at about 4,000 feet. And uh, then, of course, uh, George put the gear down. Um, and uh, here we are, touching back at the home of Discovery at the Kennedy Space Center. So that is a, a wonderful moment for us. Um, it is a, a heck of a long runway, but we're still going pretty fast, so of course we have to deploy a drag chute to help slow ourselves down. But uh, it just, just an awesome thing. Within about uh, an hour of landing, we of course walked out on the tarmac and saw a lot of uh, friendly faces and uh, familiar faces here this morning as well as we were greeted, uh, our uh, support crew and our, uh, uh, a lot of the engineers and workers. Here, I'm, we're starting to tell our story already. I, I'm kidding, that I, I think I'm talking about fishing or something there, but, uh, um, but it was great to just walk around underneath Discovery and see what a beautiful machine it is and, uh, and uh, your handiwork uh, just uh, was beautiful and brought us home safely.